Well, hi everyone. I'm in my studio again this morning. It's a lovely morning out there, um, but it's another talk tutorial. And the subject today is this lovely old uh, guild hall in the center of Thaxted, which is right in the heart of the Essex landscape. Well, why did I choose this particular subject? Well, it's obviously in the heart of Essex, that is um, my home county here in the UK. But because it's a little bit of an unusual building, um, and it's an unusual sort of um, composition really, I suppose, in as much as we've got this lovely beamed building um, right in the center of the village. We've got a lovely church in the distance Either side of that, we have a road that runs towards the church, basically. Both of them head that way. And the point is that how do you paint a subject of a building where you've got two areas that potentially could attract the eye? So if you were to stand front on, which would be a nice sort of shape, you've got to somehow introduce those two roads either side and the eye just wants to keep going either way but the reason I've chosen this composition I've moved slightly to the right that road then is actually blocked off so the eye is not led you know the eye is pulled in then it's pulled to the building but of course the eye then leads itself down the road the church is quite a dominant feature but to knock that back so that the church, so that the guild hall itself, that's the guild, the old guild hall in the centre of Thaxted, actually stands proud and, and 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 the focal point against the other buildings that are there but are not quite as dominant. But of course, the church doesn't take the eye purely because um, of the tower. I've just silhouetted it more or less in a grey. So that's what you do if you've got anything distant uh, and I've greyed off the side of the church that you can see there as well, although that's in sunlight. I've not given too much colour to this area and I've chosen the time of day when the sunlight is catching the front but puts the rest of this side in shadow. So that way the front has all the sunlight. So that's the theory behind the reason why I've chosen this particular subject um, to explain to you today. Now we come to the painting of it, really. How, why was it painted like this? Well, I used paints grey a lot in the sky with some blue patches and some warm raw sienna, painted purely wet into wet. So I damped the paper right the way down to there because that's going to be much darker, around the, the roof areas, down and painted right the way around, leaving only the buildings. I painted over that with the, with the, um, um, with the sky colour, purely because I, I was I, bearing in mind I would have realised when I painted the sky that that is going to be lighter um, behind with a darker church. So that's why I didn't put any dark colour there. And the same here, no dark colour because I'm going to be darker with this um, tree in the distance. And then I dropped in all these colours, um, but I wanted it sort of like atmosphere, but I didn't want it to dominate, so I've not got any hard edges. I allowed the paint to flow in its own way. And uh, my next video um, coming up this coming Friday, 6 p.m. on my YouTube channel um, demonstrates similar techniques in a slightly different way um, but a wet into wet approach keeping it quite dark there dropping in a little bit of uh, blue ultramarine raw sienna and I dropped in a little bit of light red there just to get a nice back glow behind the church. Once that completely dries then I blocked in all of the main colours uh, that you can see there and 
obviously once you block in all the main colors the 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 subject becomes very flat it's it hasn't got you know it the halfway stage of most paintings uh, can tend if you're not careful um to look as if you're um you're not really getting anywhere with it um but you must persevere you must push on until the final um shadow washes because that's the key to a particularly a building painting but in my uh, experience as the key to any painting really and um, <clears throat> so I blocked it all in um, put in the windows I knew I'd got light coming through because these this archway goes all the way around the bottom so down the the left and the right no light coming in that side because it's in shadow but with the Sun coming this way you've got light entering the um, the arches uh, and the opening that is an open space in there and um, these buildings obviously will be in, would eventually be in shadow. Decided to put a couple of figures there that are actually um, sort of standing there admiring the the building. So they're sort of sort of like um, uh, just standing. And I introduce a couple of little figures or several little figures. They're more or less little dots, just to give an impression of figures. Nothing too too clearly defined. Um, then. I put in the dark area there for the greenery using nice strong dark greens and this area of green I softened can you see where I've got a soft edge there I didn't want that hard edge to compete with the church in the sky so I softened in other words once the sky was completely dry and I put on all the base washes including this foreground where I put a little bit of grey but plenty of um, uh, warm colour that was light red same as I use for the um, roof areas and then once the sky is completely dry it's got to be completely dry then you just use clear water and just damp the top then when you drop this colour in as you go to that damp area it just bleeds in and gets lost it gives a very mystical sort of feel um, same with that one it's exactly what I did with that one just so it didn't compete with the church then I laid in the church in a very cool grey probably I can't really remember but probably it would be um, cobalt blue and light red may have been ultramarine and light red but I've used the same red that I've used in you know try and keep all the colors the same light red there light red there light red here um, even a touch of light red there I think but anyway um, so then the church went in in a, in just a more or less a solid form uh, nothing too detailed then came the finishing um, shadows the sun was quite high i wanted to get a nice deep shadow into the overhang of that uh, roof line but it's so important that you actually get um, enough shadow if you only put a very small shadow more or less looks like a very wide gutter area you know um works sometimes but i didn't think it would for this one so i use as if the sun was very high it's a summer scene and the sun was very so you get a lovely overhang shadow there because that then shows that that top area stands away and then a less of an overhang shadow there but it's still going in quite deep into the arch but it doesn't go into the openings the openings are treated as separately in as much as the um, shadows are put in and as I said light is entering so you have a small shadow increasing till you get to where the head of the figure is and that shows up the head of the figure it's that shadow behind that really shows the head of the figure and all we do is just paint the shadow and paint around the figure and tint it later um, then the shadow this took a bit of bravery um, I painted the shadow area it's actually um, I think the shadow is ultramarine and light red but as you can see it's quite blue because we've got lots of reds in the in you know in the surround so I, I decided to go quite blue you could use cobalt blue and Indian uh, red um, that's a shadow I use for snow and that would work on these very light areas as well 
Um, and then I got a large brush and I stroked in. Just keep it nice and clean so that you don't disturb the underpainting. If you rub at it, then you'll disturb the underpainting. So just paint from the top, work your way across, nice, plenty of water, not water, but plenty of paint in the mix. So you, you keep going, you don't uh, get any um, hard edges and don't be tempted to paint back because you'll, you'll, you'll tend to overpaint, then you'll run through it again, you'll lose the transparency. Paint clean and neat down, cleanly across, up the other side where the gables are showing. And I put in the last building, just showing up the other side. Then of course, the lighter part of that church then shows up then, and then you've got the dark, um, tower now in theory you could say well you know that should be sunlit because the sun is coming like this but artist license i wanted to knock that church away i didn't want any light on that so i just use artist license now probably the vast majority of you probably wouldn't notice that unless i'd have told you but um that's what you do as an artist um then a little bit of shadow there and of course this shadow notice i've gone darker with that shadow particularly here so that the eye is drawn towards the lighter frontage and then i i don't know whether there was any shadows from buildings i know the buildings do run out of picture here and quite likely they were but i've used a shadow shape pointing towards the building so that's another trick if you've not got if you're on the edge of the um, subject um, coming in, then obviously there could be a building here. Who knows? Doesn't really matter. Just use artist license and put a shadow in to point towards the focal point. Then I damp the paper and put in a weak shadow on the right, just to balance. Didn't want that heavy shadow there. Um, because probably wouldn't see it but it doesn't really matter but that shadow is much stronger than that one so that pulls the eye towards the lighter area and uh, tinted shadow under the figures uh, that's the key to it um, figures never look right until you have a shadow and a little bit of color a little bit of shadow color down the back of those figures um, the rest of the figures didn't need touching because they're all in shadow, never gave them any colour. And um, so there you have it. That's the theory behind the painting of that particular subject. Well, there you go. That's the Thaxted Guildhall um, here in the UK. I uh, hope you've enjoyed watching that um, and that's perhaps give you some ideas about painting your um, building subjects and putting shadows in, a little bit on colour mixing there and um, thank you very much for watching. I shall be back again next Wednesday 6pm with another talk tutorial and happy painting.